Today, we're going to be looking at the second portion of RI 6.2, RI 7.2, and RI 8.2. So if you'll look with me, the second for six is provide a summary of the text distinct from personal opinions or judgments. So you have to give a summary and you can't have personal opinions or judgments. And the seventh grade says provide an accurate summary of the text based upon this analysis. And the exact same um, is, is for eighth grade. So you're going to have to do both the same thing for second, uh, seventh and eighth grade. So you have to not only create a summary, but it has to be based on the information from your central idea and how it developed. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, if you'll remember, I think about a movie, okay? If you went to the movies and you, um, your friend asked you the next day in class, what was that movie about? Would You wouldn't sit there and recite every little thing from that movie. Or if you read your favorite book and um, your neighbor next to you says, well, was that a good book? Well, you wouldn't sit there and read the book to them and give them a play-by-play. -play. Um, that's what a summary. A summary is just a main idea or the gist of what the article um, or what the movie is about. It would be the main idea and the details. Now, with a summary, there's a couple things that we have to remember. It has to be accurate. Now, accurate means it's correct, so you have to stick to the facts. It also has to be objective. If something is objective, you don't put your opinions in it and you don't put your judgments in it. So you got to remember those things. So let's look at this little illustration they've given us. It's a news report. It says, a local woman was injured while water skiing when a large silver carp jumped across her path and broke her jaw. State park officials indicate that this non-native species is known to fly over the water when it's disturbed. Many consider the fish to be a public nuisance. Now, one thing, before I even read the story, um, I see a vocabulary word, carp, and you have to know what carp means. But if you look in the story and you use the paragraph, then there's several clues, and at the end you realize that a carp is a fish. So you can use your clues there to help you determine that. So let's look at this. If we're trying to figure out a summary, remember uh, one strategy is you can use the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. But mainly let's look at the who here. So, um, or what, what, who is this about? Well, we know it's about the carp, okay? And well, what about the carp? Well, it injured someone. It, it broke someone's jaw. Well, how did it break someone's jaw? Well, it broke someone's jaw. So, if we're looking for our central idea here, we're going to see that it's a non-native species, the fish, can injure people. Because in the story, it injured the person that was on the water when it was disturbed. So, now what details helped us figure that out? Well, one, we had to know that it could actually fly over the water because that's how the person got injured. So that's a very important detail, that it flew over the water. Also, the fact that it was the carp and it jumped and broke her jaw. So those would be the important details that let us know that, obviously, that news report, they were trying to let us know that pretty much a carp injured someone because it jumped over them. So let's look at it in the form of a bigger text. This is called The Invaders, and this is a government bulletin, and it's by Mark Sanchez. During the early 1900s, two kinds of invasive organ organisms turned up in waterways in the United States. One was the Asiatic clam, a fast-growing shellfish that crowds out other aquatic animals. Uh, the, uh, the other was millpole, a fast-growing plant that overcomes and displaces native water plants. Wildlife officials are seeing once smooth freshwater beaches littered with sharp, tiny shells. Though Asiatic clams are rarely larger than 1.5 inches across, the sheer number of the shells is cause for concern. The highest populations occur near power and water waste plants. The clams cause problems by biofouling or clogging intake valves. Biofouling also occurs in irrigation canals and pipes and drinking water facilities. Repairing damage caused by Asiatic clams is expensive. Experts estimate that the price tag has reached $1 billion per year in the United States. So if we were going to have to look at a summary of this, let's look at it on um, the first paragraph. From looking at the first paragraph, it, I can see 
a couple of things. Um, it says, one of the main things that sticks out with me is they mentioned one of was the, um, as, ugh, I can't even say it, Asiatic clam that crowds out other animals. And then they mentioned a mule foal that overcomes and displaces the native water plant. And from looking at that, I can see this first paragraph is just an introduction paragraph. They're introducing us to the topic. So I know that it's going to be about the mill foal and it's going to be about this clam and how it's causing problems in the waterways. So I already kind of have an idea of what it's about. So let's look at the second paragraph. Well, if you notice, looking at the second paragraph, it's only focusing on the who and what is the who here. Well, the who here is going to be the clam. Or whatever. Anyway, it's going to be the clam. So the clam is the main thing that we're going to be looking at here. Now, we need to know what about the clam. See if I can try this again. Maybe it'll work this time. Yeah. So we have the clam. So what about the clam? Well, what, what's wrong with the clam? Well, it's causing problems with what? Biofouling. And obviously, they give us what that means. They give us a context clue, which means clogging the intake valves meaning that they're getting stuck in there. And also, it occurs in irrigation canals and pipes and drinking water facilities. Because there are so many of them, they're small, but because there's so many of them, it clogs it so that the water can't come through. And also, they're saying that it's very costly because um, to fix it, to get them out of the pipes, it costs a lot of money. So, obviously, the problem here is that the clam is clogging these valves, and it's causing all these problems for canals, pipes, and water systems. So, let's continue the story. Now, the fern-like and harmless-looking millfoil has also become a threat. So, if you remember back in our first paragraph, it mentioned that there were two problems caused in our waterways in the United States. And in the second paragraph, it focused on the clams. So, now it looks like the third paragraph is going to focus on the other um, problem, which is the millfoil. So, the fern-like and harmless-looking millfoil has become a threat. It, too, can clog valves at water facilities. In addition, millfoil poses problems for recreational water users. Dense growths of the Eurasian native create unfavorable conditions for swimmers, boaters, and fishers. Millfoil grows aggressively and crowds out other vegetation. The resulting ecosystem lacks food sources and habitats for native fish, amphibians, and waterfowl. Millfoil spreads naturally when fragments travel by water currents. It spreads with human help when fragments are carried from one waterway to another on boats and boat trailers. So, first of all, I like to look in the story and let's see if we can label some of these who, what, when. Well, who, obviously, we've kind of already figured that out. It's talking about the millfall hill, the millfall mill here. So what's the problem with these millfall? What's going on here? Well, we know that one thing, they're clogging the valves, the water facilities. Facilities are also posing problems for recreational water users. What else are they doing? It says um, they're grow, they grow aggressively, which means very, very fast. Uh, and so they're crowding out vegetation. So it's taking over. Um, let's see here. It also makes a lack of food source for habitats for native fish, amphibians, and waterfowl. Waterfowl. So it's making their food source. It's taking it away. So it's going to destroy their habitat as well. Um, and it, it talks about how it's being spread by boats. Because when they go from one water to another, it's on the boat and it carries it. But it looks like we have several little things here. So we know that it's about millfoil and how it's causing problems. So, and it looks like those are the problems that it's causing. So, let's look at our question now. Okay, let's look. Which of the following statements best summarizes the text above? So, we're only looking for a summary of a text, this text. Now, it's very, very important because summary questions, you may look at this and you're like, whoa, that is a lot of reading. Yes, when you're looking at summary, you have to be very, very careful and you're looking for very de the details very carefully. So, let's look at A. The annoying millfall plant does extensive harm to human facilities as well as to fragile ecosystems. It spreads ruthlessly by water current and should be a major concern to outdoor enthusiasts. Well, one thing stuck out with me here, and I wish I still had it highlighted up top, but it won't stay. To out, a major concern to outdoor enthusiasts. Well, 
Remember, let's go back to the story. We had underlined how it was unfavorable for recreational water users, but then we also had underlined how it was making, messing up the ecosystem, and it was it was causing problems for the amphibians, fish, and waterfowl. Does that say anything about that in A? It's just saying it's a concern for outdoor enthusiasts. No. So we know it can't be A. We would have to eliminate A because A only is telling about one portion of it. It's leaving out some of those major details. Remember, we underlined like four problems, and it wasn't just a problem for people. Remember, we said it was a problem for animals and um, also for the, for the habitat. So let's look at B. Fern-like and harmless-looking millfall is a secret threat. Dense growth of the Eurasian native crowd for waterways, creating unfavorable conditions for swimmers, boaters, and fishers. Well, by looking at that, I see some details there that aren't even really important. I see some minor details. Remember, in a summary, you only want to put the major details. And does it even really, it tells a problem how it's a problem for people, but does it even go into some of the main details that we talked about and underlined earlier? No, it doesn't say anything about the whole second half, about the ecosystem and um, how it's causing problems for the animals. It doesn't say any of that. So let's look at C. Millfall, a non-native species of water plant, ruins recreational water activities and heartlessly wipes out food sources and habitat for animals. So let's look at that. First of all, it's saying that it's a water plant, which, hmm, yes, uh, ruins recreational water activities. So it's saying it ruins these water activities. Now, I see, first of all, I see something that it would kind of be heartlessly wipes out. That kind of could be an opinion word there. So remember, you keep your opinions out of it. So I wouldn't want to choose this answer solely because it has an opinion in it. Um, so I'm automatically plus when it says a non-native species, that's kind of a minor detail that wouldn't go in it. But let's make, let's make sure. Let's look at D. Eurasian millfall is an invasive species that spreads both naturally and with human help. Was well, that true? Well, yes, because it talks about how um, humans spread it by boats, and then it talks about how naturally it's spread because it's spread in the ecosystem and it takes over and it takes um, over the habitat. So that would be naturally. So that's true. Millfold is an invader because it can harm water facilities. Well, earlier, Let's see if I can pull it up now that I've got on the same page. We had several things underlined. Remember, we had uh, it can harm water facilities. We had underlined that. And then we had also underlined uh, it crowds out vegetation, the, the ecosystem, the lack of food for the fish and um, amphibians. So let's look. It can harm water facilities, destroy animal habitat, yep, habitats, crowd out native plants. So the things that we had underlined before we even read the question are all included. So we know that D had to be our answer choice. Now, just as a review, remember, um, we didn't choose A because A only talked about one of the details. It didn't include all of them. In a summary, you need all the main details. It wasn't B because B um, didn't include all of them. C had opinions and it didn't include all of them. So D would be our best answer choice. So you've got to remember, it's very careful. You have to look at every answer choice and you have to dissect it and look back in the story and eliminate your opinions.